After having discussed in the previous two lectures why applied vectors should not be considered as vectors, but still they are pretty useful uh, geometrical tool, we start now to consider the geometrical objects discussed in this course, starting with planes in R3. By definition, a plane is a geometrical object. Thus, in general, it will not have an algebraic structure. Definition, a translation is a map from a vector space V to itself, called uh, Tz, of the kind Tz of V equals V plus Z. It means that it takes an, a generic vector little v inside V, and sends it to the sum of v um, with a fixed vector z, which uh, completely describes the translation tz. Notice that a translation tz is never a homomorphism, except if z equals to zero, the zero vector, in which case tz is just the identity. This is because um, if z is not the identity, the map tz will not send the zero vector to the zero vector, because it will send the zero vector to zero plus z, that is not the zero vector if z is, is not the zero vector. And we have seen that the necessary condition for a map to be a homomorphism is, is that it sends the zero vector of the domain to the zero vector of the codomain. Translations are purely geometrical maps and pretty innocuous in that. In particular, they are isometries of Rn, preserving lengths, angles, areas, volumes, etc. Definition, a plane is the image by a translation of a two-dimensional subvector space of Rn. Therefore, we have the trivial translations as a planes, which are the two-dimensional subvector spaces of Rn, and also the non-trivial translations. So those are the planes which have no um, no algebraic structures on because for example zero will not belong to them but still they look geometrically like a plane we refer to the exercise 1.3 for a detailed discussion of what we mean by expression in coordinates and parametric for subvector spaces of rn a plane in R3 being just a translated of a two dimension as a vector space can be thus expressed in coordinates, which is an expression in which we list all the, the vectors or the points belonging to the plane. It is something like XYZ in R3 such that AX plus BY plus CZ plus D equals to zero for a, b, c different from the zero vector. Here we have not used anything except the description of the plane like a, a, a set. The other way to describe a plane is the following, is the parametric form. So uh, vector space generated by v and w plus a fixed vector p where v and w are linearly independent, so they are a basis for two dimensions of vector space, and p is a fixed vector in R3. This is a two dimensional of vector space, and we will call it homogeneous component of the plane. Remark, the homogeneous component in coordinates, in the coordinate expression, is simply the same set except that the defining equation will not have the constant term. It will just have the, the summons involving the variables. So it is the set of um, triples in R3 
x, y, z, satisfying the unique equation ax plus b, y plus c, z equals to zero. This is a two-dimensional vector space expressed as a set of vectors in R3. Uh, and this subvector space, so all these vectors, are orthogonal to A, B, C. Indeed, its defining equation can be written as uh, the scalar product of the vectors A, B, C and X, Y, Z equals to zero. So this expression here, it is the scalar product of the vector A, B, C and X, Y, Z. So in the Cartesian coordinates form, we have for free the normal vector to the plane uh, we are expressing. Therefore, this is the preferred expression in the case uh, we would like to find, for example, a plane um, that is perpendicular to a fixed given vector ABC. We just have to take the coordinates of the vector and multiply them by the generic coordinates of the vector of the plane and then adjust d accordingly to the other conditions. Of course there are infinitely many planes that are perpendicular to a certain vector but this expression is the easiest one to provide a plane with the condition of being perpendicular to some fixed vector. For example, determine the plane H in R3, including the point 1, 2, 3, and orthogonal to the vector negative 1, 3, 1. From the remark, we deduce that we can directly write the plane in coordinates. Its homogeneous component is H0 equals XYZ in R3 such that the scalar product between this vector and the generic x, y, z of the plane must be zero. So uh, the, the equation, the defining equation becomes negative x plus 3y plus z equals to zero. The sot plane is a translated of h naught by definition. The translation is expressed by the sum and d in the equation negative x plus 3y plus z plus d equals to zero. And we can compute d by imposing that the vector 1, 2, 3 belongs to h. And this condition plugged in in this expression yields negative 1 plus 6 plus 3 plus d equals to zero, which implies d equals to negative 8. Therefore, the the plane H in a coordinate is expressed as x, y, z in R3 such that negative x plus 3y plus z minus 8 equals to 0. Remark, just as in the expression in coordinates of a homomorphism, this expression of H is generally the best since, for instance, should we need to determine which points out of 1 million belong to H, we can just plug in each of these points and see if it satisfies the, this, co, uh, this equation. And if the answer is yes, then the point belongs to H. If the answer is no, the point will not belong to H. On the other hand, if we uh, the expression of H in parametric form, just understanding whether a point was lying in H or not, involved the solution of a system of linear equations. Mm, hence, the, uh, the expression in coordinates, if one wants to exploit the homomorphism, usually is always better than the expression in uh, parametric uh, uh, form. Just for the heck of it, we find the parametric expression of h. By definition, h is going to be equal to h naught plus the translation vector, which is any vector that belongs to the plane. In this case, 
we have provided one of them namely the vector 1 comma 2 comma 3 hence we just need to find the basis vw of h naught h naught in cartesian coordinates has this expression as we have seen now if we just manipulated the equation and the expression of h naught, uh, of h naught we end up having the following uh, set so it is the set of coordinates uh, in R3 such that the y and the z are left free to vary they have no restrictions but the x is bound to satisfy this equation with y and z therefore it has to be equal to 3x plus z we just derive the condition on x uh, by expressing x in function of y and z from this equation now to find the basis of h naught we just need to find two linearly independent vectors inside this set and how do we find them well first we can choose since all the all the vectors inside h naught correspond to a choice of y and z we can first start to choose y1 and z0 and then y0 and z1 and we will surely get two linear independent vectors simply by looking at the last two coordinates of the vectors we are finding so we can set v to be 3 1 0 corresponding to the choice of y equals to 1 and z equals to 0 and w is so y equals to 0 z equals to 1 and consequently x equals to 1 therefore a parametric expression of h is going to be the h naught expressed through a basis so a vector space generated by uh, 3 1 0 and 1 0 1 plus the translation part that is given in the text it is a generic point belonging to the plane that was 1 2 3